Hello, my name is Jared Cochran, and for today's lesson, we'll be covering Jean Piaget's theory of cognitive and language development. Before beginning, I'd like to review our goals for this lesson. After viewing this presentation, students will be able to identify the four stages of cognitive and language development theorized by Jean Piaget and be able to give an example illustrating each of the four stages. Jean Piaget, born 18, in 1896, was a Swiss biologist and philosopher who became one of the most influential researchers of developmental psychology during the 20th century. He considered himself a genetic epistemologist, wondering how we come to know what we know. Piaget became interested in how children think after watching his nephew and daughter's behavior. He reasoned that, though younger children's understanding of concepts was qualitatively different from their older counterparts, this was a result of a different process of thought, not a lack of intelligence. He determined that there are levels of growth in which new abilities are developed. Piaget's theory of cognitive and language development concerns itself with four main stages. Each of these stages is marked by changes in how children understand and experience the world around them. The first stage is the sensory motor stage, which generally is present from birth to age two. Next is the pre-operational stage, which occurs in toddlers and during early childhood, or age two to seven. Following the pre-operational stage, the concrete operational stage occurs, developing in elementary and pre-adolescence between ages seven and 11. Finally, the formal operational stage begins in adolescence around the age of 11 and continues into adulthood. The sensory motor stage takes place between birth and age two. During this stage, knowledge is acquired through sensory experience and physical interaction. All that a child has to base their knowledge of the world on is their limited experience using their reflexive movements and physical reactions. Their language skills are based on the same physicality. Just as they learn to move their hands or legs, they learn how, to, how their mouth moves and eventually begin mimicking and making sounds. Piaget initially observed his 13-month-old nephew, Gerard, playing with a ball. When, he, when the ball rolled under a table, Gerard could still see it, so he went and got the ball back. However, when the ball rolled out of sight underneath a sofa, Gerard only looked for it where he had last seen it. Piaget hypothesized that in the early months of life, children don't realize that, even though an object is out of sight, it still exists. Following this, Piaget dedicated time to studying his daughter, Jacqueline, through toddlerhood. He observed that, over time, she went from thinking an object no longer existed, to looking for an object that was out of sight, and finally, by 21 months, she had learned to find hidden objects and knew that they existed on their own, not only when she could see them. Thus, the sensory motor stage is marked by gaining an understanding of object permanence, understanding that an object exists outside of the sight of the child. When a child understands that an object still exists, separate from their perception of it, they can begin to relate words or names to those objects. The pre-operational stage occurs between the ages of two and seven. It is during this stage that children begin to learn through pretend play. They still struggle with logic and have an egocentric view of the world, unable to take the point of view of others. In language, this presents itself in the way they talk constantly, though much of the, what they say is unnecessary. They might describe everything they are doing, even though it is easy to see exactly what they are doing. They also lack an understanding of conservation. For example, two glasses are filled with equal amounts of water. One of the glasses is poured into a taller, thinner glass. Let's see what happens when a child in the pre-operational stage is faced with such a task. Okay, this is Ethan, and he's five and a half years old, Hi. and we're going to do an experiment with him. So, Ethan, can you look at the two glasses there? What's in there? Blue water. Blue water. Um, which cup has more, this cup or this cup? Or are they both the same? They're both the same. Exactly the same? Okay. Um, we're going to see what happens when we pour this cup into the cylinder. Now what do you think? 
which one has more, this or this, or are they both the same? This one. This one has more? Mm-hmm. How come you think that one has more? Because it's bigger. Oh, it's bigger. And that one's empty anyway. Alrighty. What happens when we put it in this cup? They're both the same. They're both the same again? How did that happen? You poured it back into this cup. So when I pour it in the cylinder, it's bigger. Now it's more? Yeah. But then when I pour it back in the cup, Then what happens? They're both the same again. How does it do that? You poured it back in. But how, how come it's more when it's in here, but it's the same when it's in here? Well, you measured, you took some out, and pop, it's, they're both the same. Wow. Okay. So when we pour this cup uh -huh. into here, What happens? They're not the same. How does it do that? So when they're when when one's empty, one's full, that doesn't make them the same. Okay. Thanks, Ethan. As you can see, when the child is asked which glass has more water or if they are the same, the child chooses the taller glass. The water is higher in that glass, and therefore, according to their current level of understanding, there is more in that glass. There's no concept of conservation between containers. Children between the ages of 7 and 11 are in the concrete operational stage. During this stage, children are beginning to think more logically and begin to work things out in their head without having to physically try it, though their logic is very rigid. They are able to perform tasks involving sorting or ordering, whether by shape, size, color, or other characteristic. They also achieve understanding of conservation. The abstract and hypothetical is still difficult for them to grasp. In my own class, I've asked questions, and instead of the answer I'm expecting, my students respond with literal interpretations that I hadn't even considered. This leads to a laugh on my part, followed by an opportunity to praise them on their understanding but also expand on that understanding. Children begin to shed their egocentric view and start to think about the viewpoint of others. This stage of language development is used to convey concrete facts rather than mental concepts. According to Piaget, there are some people who do not actually advance from this stage at any point in their lives. The formal operational stage begins at age 11 and continues into adulthood. Logical understanding is increased providing the ability to use deductive reasoning and grasp as abstract concepts. People are able to develop more than one solution to a problem and have a more scientific approach to the world around them. They can express and debate abstract theoretical concepts found in mathematics, logic, and philosophy. Piaget believed that these four stages of development are universal and that children never skip a stage and move to the next. It is important to challenge the abilities of a child, but not to give them tasks or information that is too advanced for their level of understanding. Based on what we've discussed today, how could you use your understanding of Piaget's theory while considering the age and assumed stage of your students to help shape appropriate curriculum in your classroom? Is his theory of developmental stages still applicable, or has it become outdated? Can this theory realistically be used universally to encompass the students who fall into each generalized age range? Thank you for sharing your time with me today.